Hello everyone, thank you for watching my YouTube channel today. I'm Gary York and I'm a columnist for CorrectionsOne.com. Please join if you haven't already joined. It's a very informative group with over 380,000 likes already and members. And today I want to talk to you about contraband. Yeah, it's a topic that's talked about every year, every week. But I want to talk to you about scanning for contraband, techniques for scanning for contraband, how to combine technology scanning for contraband with our own physical searches and routine and daily searches of the dormitories and cells and dorms. If you like this video, please subscribe to Gary York True Prison Stories that you're watching right now. Uh, I would like to say, let's start out how, what contraband does. Contraband endangers everyone behind the prison walls and the jail walls. It places all the officers, civilian staff, and other inmates not involved with contraband in danger. And contraband is power for inmates. Inmates who have contraband have power because power and contraband is money in prison. And they can use that to barter. For illegal activities they can use that to barter for hits on other inmates or hits on staff members so contraband we have to really pay attention to the dangers of contraband and we need from the top down to the front line to be aware of how important it is to scan for contraband daily now when I was in the prison we used to have to do routine um, dorm cell searches and we were told I want you to hit a couple of cells a day on your shift I want you to log in your log and when I worked at the jail for the county system they also made it mandatory I want to have two cells a shift at random every shift do a, a cell shakedown and I want an incident report typed and written on what you found if you found anything uh, any kind of contraband and this is a good way to keep stats on who's got the contraband and who doesn't who to watch for who we should pay more attention to you know cell 109 has had contraband hits now twice in the last month so maybe we need to monitor them maybe we need to monitor their inmate phone calls this is all intelligence gathering when we search for contraband now one thing I like to do is combine searching for contraband physically with cell searches and shakedowns with the technology that is now given to us that we didn't have back when I started. We had the wand only. And we have full body scanners now. And these full body scanners are used mostly in the jail system throughout our country. I know a lot of prison systems are always talking about the budget. We can't afford it. But let me tell you, is it worth saving money in the long run to go ahead and get some of these full body scanners in our prison system? Well, I'll tell you why it might be worth it. And you tell me what you think. Drug overdoses happen in jails and prisons across the country every week. Drug overdoses of inmates are very costly for the agency. We've already discussed that these contraband items place our officers in danger. That's number one. Number one reason for the body scanner is our officers and prison staff and inmates not involved are in danger, placed in danger. So that's the main reason in my book to save lives. The other reason is the agency on these overdoses spends thousands of dollars a year for outside hospital. You know, the inmate has to go when he's in the county to the hospital or when he's in the state, he has to go to the hospital. These hospital bills are humongous, okay? And these body scanning machines can help stop some of that contraband coming in. Cell phones coming into the prison are, or the jail, are a big issue. They set up hits with gang members who set up hits not only in the prison system, but on the streets. They're using these cell phones to harm the very community that we serve and protect. 
our taxpayers. And they also endanger everyone behind the prison walls. And so if you look at the injuries from smuggled weapons as well, weapons entering our jails and prisons, an inmate shanks another inmate, there's an aggravated battery charge on the inmate who, who uh, committed the crime, but now we have an inmate in the hospital running up a huge hospital bill. So there's a hundred reasons that we could just sit here and go over on why we must control contraband. But we need to use all our technology and our old methods as well combined to help slow and stop contraband. We're never going to get every piece of contraband. Let's, any of you that have been in this business for a while know we cannot 100% stop every item of contraband. But boy, we can sure put a big dent in it. We can sure let them know that we're on guard and that we're watching. So when you do your random cell searches, at different times of the day, different times of the week. Um, hopefully, the prison management has some uh, dates that they want to do prison shakedowns. From your cell searches alone, you're gathering information, and now you compile that intelligence, and it tells you that there may be more contraband in dorm H than in the other dorms because we're getting more hits in there on our random cell searches. So maybe dorm H is due this weekend or, or whenever management decides for a complete dorm shakedown. Same in the jail. In the jail, you have pods and you have dorms. Pod H is getting hit the most. There's more contraband being found there. So this Saturday, when we don't have all the administrative things to do with court and all the things that go on in the jail administratively during the week, we're going to use Saturday where we have a little extra manpower. That's always a big issue. A little extra manpower. We're going to hit dorm H and do a complete shakedown. And we're going to clean dorm H. All we can do, folks, is control. Control contraband. Now, why do I think prisons should get the uh, full body scan machine? Well, there's a lot of reasons. You have outside work squads that go out for the prison. Department of Transportation here in Florida goes out 10-hour uh, days Monday through Thursday. And they're home uh, in their cells Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So they go out to the outside work squads. They should go through the body scan machine going out to see if they're taking anything out. And especially when they come back in, because how many times do we have drive-bys drive on outside work squads where a family member, friend, throws some kind of contraband on the side of the road because they do get the word out, even though they're not supposed to know where the work squad is working the next day. The word slips out sometimes. Hey, boss, where are we working to, tomorrow? Well, we're over on Fifth Avenue, uh, you know, in downtown, and we're going to be cleaning that park. It slips out. It's not supposed to. We're not supposed to let them know where we're going every day. And then what do they do? They let a family member know on the phone where they're working and they get contraband. So we need that coming back in. We have outside work squads doing the mowing around the outside grounds. We have the uh, what we call dog boy here in Florida, the dog uh, keeper, canine keeper. He feeds the dogs, exercises the dogs, um, cleans the, the dog kennels. Uh, I've had cases where he has family members drop off in the wood lines uh, contraband and while he's exercising the dogs he picks up the contraband that's another reason we need the body scanner he may insert it into a body cavity and another reason is when we have the bluebird come in and we call it the bluebird in Florida where the inmates are transported from one prison to another or they're coming in from a reception center we should run them through the body scan machine because um, they could be bringing contraband from one prison to another. It just depends on how good or how well they were searched before being put on that transport bus. Hopefully they were searched very well, but we're not going to do a body cavity search. We're not medical, so we need the body scan machine. So one of the big issues that I see is prosthetics and handicapped inmates. Huge contraband distributors or mules, however you want to say it. And it may not always be that they're willing, but the handicapped are targeted by some of the gang members and drug dealers on the compound or people who want weapons. 
and they'll threaten the handicapped inmate and say, you're going to carry me my drugs inside the padding of your wheelchair. Underneath the crutches, there's a padding. We're going to use your crutches to get this in. Uh, your prosthetic leg, your prosthetic arm. We're going to use all these items, and you're going to work for us. And we'll keep care of you. We'll get you where you need to go. We'll take great care of you, and you're going to get extra food and probably get some money in your account. Well, the body scan machine works on prosthetics as well. We use the Rad Pro Secure Pass full body scan machine where I last worked. It's a low uh, x-ray exposure, but it still can show you items in the body. And prosthetics, it will show you items hidden in prosthetics. And then even with the full body scan machine, we still need to physically search the crutches and physically search the wheelchairs and everything combining technology with what we already know will help us stop a lot of contraband in, in coming into the jails and prisons. And when you use these body scan machines, make sure if your agency is willing to buy one, purchase one to save lives and to save money in the long run, as I explained earlier. Let's try to get that uh, whole technology or that whole mind thought in there. Maybe we'll start getting more tools for our trade plus more equipment for officers, but that would, that's another whole video. Pay raises for officers, better equipment for officers. But let's get some safety equipment too, something that protects us while we're in there so we can go home safely to our families. <clears throat> the body scan machines can be purchased from these companies, and you need to make sure when you purchase them that they will provide 100% training. And whoever you train to use these body scan machines need to be very methodically trained. Um, I'm not an expert in the body scan machines, but I do know from talking to a lot of uh, deputies that I worked with that used them, I stood there while they used them as I processed inmates into uh, uh, bookend. They do. They have to do the body scan where the inmates take each shoe off and they put their shoe in their hand. This is after they've been stripped and put into their inmate clothing and then they go into the, or before, either way, it depends on which way you want to do it. Um, but you have them Pat search very well, take everything off, their belts, ear rings, rings, tongue rings, all those things they come in with. And then they walk over with one shoe in each hand and stand and the body scan machine moves from left to right. And the person operating the body scan machine must cut the body into quadrants. If you just look at the whole body as one, you may miss something. So do left front, right front, left bottom right bottom break the body into quadrants and when you see something now you still have to take the inmate down and he has to be searched again or you can uh if it's a inside a body cavity you will you must have to get medical involved to search for inside body cavity areas so these are the things that we need to do to make sure that no contraband gets in and also, when the body scan machine is being used, some things are so minute that they could be in a piece of plastic and be a quarter inch razor blade. And it will show up as a little blur or a mass on the body scan machine. Well, don't ignore those little blurs or little masses. When you see that, you're not sure what it is. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's contraband. The inmate needs to be taken down. That little mass was in his groin area. We're going to search that groin area. Don't be scared. Don't be ashamed. And the body scan machine is much more accurate than the squat and cough technique. But we can use them all together. Use them all. And let them know we are serious about finding contraband. And make them think twice about bringing contraband into the jail or the prison. We cannot control this contraband fight or battle if we don't act on it and work hard to keep it at a minimum. Must keep the contraband in a minimum. We're not going to stop it all, but we must keep it in a minimum and we're going to save lives. And in the long run, we're going to save the agency money from a cutter because we got that razor blade and that inmate was going to go in the prison and, or jail and later kill himself. And now we've got a big investigation that costs money. We've got big medical that costs money. We've got all kinds of things. So there's, as I said, a hundred reasons why we need to control contraband. What types of contraband will we find with a body scan machine? We're going to find 
razor blades. We're going to find paper clips. We're going to find small cell phones and body cavities. We're going to find small caliber weapons inside the body cavities. We're going to find drugs. We're going to find many things that are non-metallic that the metal detector cannot detect. Okay? And we can keep the metal detectors too if we have them already because there are metal contraband items still going to be attempted to be brought into the jail or prison. So we'll catch the metal with them, but items that are non-metallic that are being used for weapons today. Look how many weapons are plastic now that can just kill you in a second, like knives made out of plastic that are just as effective as a, a metal blade knife. And all kinds of contraband made from titanium now. Hard plastics. We have to fight the fight and use these things to detect contraband. Other methods of technology to use with our old-fashioned search skills, which will never go away. We always have to keep our old-fashioned search skills and pat-down skills and strip search skills, is drones, using our own drones to patrol the prisons and jails from above, to watch for contraband being placed or dropped off outside the prison areas or jails in the wood lines. We can use drones as well. So let's use technology that everyone else is using combined with our own search skills and stop these contraband. Just a few things to get your mind going and hopefully we'll get on the ball and let's not forget our cell searches, folks. Random cell searches prevent escapes. Random cell searches prevent death. Random cell searches prevent uh, gang activity. Think of it that way. When you find something, think of the big picture. And think of contraband in gang-associated coded letters. All these things. I've found coded letters before that threaten people, and so have many of you. These letters from gang members that are coded are very important. We must get them. We must give them to our gang coordinators, and we must get them translated. And then we know who we need to lock up, transfer, and save a life. Thanks a lot for listening. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this video, and please subscribe. Gary York, True Prison Story.